While Representative Lesh is making his way to the table, I was at a, a chamber event for women business owners recently, and someone from, uh, and I don't remember her, her exact title, but uh, she's an attorney with, um, with the military in some capacity, and we had gotten a discussion about this bill. I was very excited that um, it was coming to this committee. I think it's a good bill. So Representative Lesh is at the table. We'll let him go ahead and explain the bill and what it does. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, members, uh, House File 260 is called the Uniform Deployed Parents Custody and Visitation Act. Um, and uh, next to me, Major Lindsay Olson with the Minnesota National Guard is gonna go into the details of it. But before she does, um, I'm gonna tell you a brief story. In, uh, in 2009, uh, I went down to Fort Benning uh, for basic training in AIT. It's OSED Combined Infantry Training. Uh, and I was in a bay, I slept in a bay for uh, four, four months. Um, we had a Christmas break in there too. But uh, with 62 other guys, it's infantry so it was all guys, uh, and the vast majority of them were half my age. And being half my age, um, they had the opportunity to do many more stupid things before they left for Fort Benning, like get married or something, um, uh, or you know have kids or something like that. Uh, well, inevitably, when you're that young uh, and you're removed from the situation, things go downhill. Now, uh, at basic training, you're not allowed any communication. We didn't even get a phone call. We were supposed to get one phone call at Thanksgiving, but. The lines were too long, so half the people didn't get it. So they had to resort to letters back and forth. So over the course of weeks, as basic training started, um, I could see the letters uh, that they got back from their girlfriends get darker and darker and darker, or their wives. Um, and the two guys in the bunks next to me, um, um, around about late October, uh, began the process of sobbing themselves to sleep at night. Uh, because how their relationships were going south and they didn't know what was going to happen to their kids. Um, and uh, it was really a sad situation to see. Um, now, this was, of course, not deployment, um, but it was similar in that the communication was severely restricted um, and it was, it was as close to deployment as those kids had seen at that point. I say kids, but, you know, they were men uh, and uh, they were serving our country, so it's a different situation. Um, now, uh, I had another soldier... Uh, in my battalion uh, during uh, the deployment to Kuwait uh, just in 2011 when two of the 135 was in deploy, deployed to, to Kuwait. And uh, he had called me in the midst of it because he was going through a divorce uh, and uh, had no opportunity to, to see his kid or even uh, communicate with his kid via video, which a lot of other his fellow soldiers were doing. Um, and he wanted an option to be able to do that. There was no option provided uh, in the current system in law. Now it's something that technically a judge could already do, uh, but he found it difficult establishing to the judge that this was important because he was in a different situation as a deployed soldier. So House File 260 is important. And rather than, than go into the details, which I'll let Major Olson do, um, I'll describe, first of all, it's a uniform law. So for those of you freshmen that don't understand uniform laws, uh, essentially a lot of other states have passed them through the Uniform Laws Commission. And the vast majority of anything objectionable has already been winnowed out. Um, some of us think of it as watered down too, but uh, <laughs> uh, it, it's, it's not, they're not nearly as objectionable. Um, number two, it's a bar association bill. The uh, military and veterans affairs section as well as the family law section of the bar association has, has worked on this um, and, and sanded off the edges to make it good law. And number three, as I'd noted previously, uh, technically this is something that the vast majority of it, the judges can already do. But we do that sometimes around here. We pass laws that even though a judge can already do it, we need to establish some guidelines because especially in an area um, as wrought with mm. obstacles as family law, judges will need some direction. Uh, guidelines in the law saying, hey, by the way, wink, wink, you can do this if you have a deployed soldier and it would be better for the family unit in the long run. So with that, uh, members, I'd introduce to you Major Lindsay Olson, Minnesota National Guard. Uh, Representative Lesh, would you like to move the bill first? Uh, I want to, yes. I, I'd move House File 260, Madam Chair. Great, thank you. Go ahead and introduce yourself for the tape, please. Madam Chair, I'm Major Lindsay Olson. I'm uh, here as the chair of the military and family law section of the Minnesota Bar. And I'm also the general counsel for the Minnesota National Guard. I've worked both on the committee that drafted the uniform law itself and also with a working group here in Minnesota 
uh, on the family bar and the MVA. So I have a lot of history with this particular law, so I hope I can answer any questions you have today. I'd like to just build on what uh, Representative Lesh talked about with some examples, and I want to give two that are a little more in depth in terms of things we've seen here in Minnesota. The first one involves a service member father who had primary custody of his children, and when he was given notice for deployment, the mother moved for primary custody. And in this particular situation, the mother had had a really unstable environment, had had several abusive relationships, substance abuse problems, um, some mental health issues, and so hadn't been very involved in the child, with the child at all prior to this time. The father service member was remarried uh, and had uh, the wife, the stepmother, had two children as well that the, uh, the daughter was very close with. And during that period, um, custody was given to the mother during deployment. And so uh, the, the child moved with the mother. And the father attempted to um, move to allow the child to see the stepmother, to keep contact with her and with the step siblings. And the mother would not allow that. And the court struggled with how legally to allow that continued contact. And in looking at the best interest of the child, what we try to provide during a mobilization or deployed environment would be the, for the stability of the child, which is one of the central themes and the best interest factors as well. But this really gets to not just the rights of the service member to have their custody rights, but it really is about the best interest of the child during that time as well in helping to um, give guidance, as uh, Representative Lesh said, to the court to help provide that stable environment for the child. The second example that we, I have is one from a brigade commander friend of mine who I believe you met, Colonel Joe Clyborne. And uh, she was sitting down with a really great soldier who had chosen not to re-enlist. And she said to him, I don't understand why you wouldn't re-enlist. You've got a great career here. We really want to keep you. You've got a $25,000 bonus on the table. And he said, ma'am, I would love to stay. I've enjoyed serving my country, but during my last deployment, uh, I lost custody of my children because uh, my wife, or my ex-wife had moved for custody during the deployment, and now uh, I've, I've been relegated to every other weekend rather than the primary custody that I had mm -hmm. before. And so I want, he felt that it was a decision between his children and serving his country. Mm -hmm. So those are two examples of the types of things that we've seen here in Minnesota. <sighs> Minnesota is currently the only state in the nation that has no protections in this area. Wow. So uh, just briefly, I want to be able to get time for your questions, but I want to outline uh, a little bit of, of what this bill entails. And the first part really lays out and encourages private parties to facilitate their own agreements. Now, anyone who's at all familiar with family law knows that a lot of times that's just not possible. But for people who are amicable, it gives them a way forward. It, it shows them how to get that agreement drafted and, and protect the best interests of the child during that period. And, uh, and the second, the third article has procedures for court orders. So in those cases where parties can't agree, then it will lay out um, a procedure for a, a, a temporary court order during the deployed period that would uh, allow for the child to maintain contact with, with the service member for certain and for people in their life who are important to them and that could be anyone from the grandparents to a step parent to siblings that may not live with uh, the other uh, primary parent and so uh, there are, amongst that is also expedited hearings uh, for the court so if, um, if a service member has to leave on a short time frame they're able to get in and get this filed with the court Article 4 is also very important. It deals with uh, the termination of the agreement and how to reintegrate with the service member parent upon their return. So with that, I would like to allow you to ask any additional questions. Members, are there any questions for the testifier or for the bill's author? Seeing none, uh, thank you for bringing this bill forward. I think it's going to um, help a lot of families. And uh, with that, uh, Representative Lesh would renew his motion that House File 260 be passed and referred to the General Register, I believe, correct? 
Oh, excuse me. I guess it's going to Veterans Affairs. Um, all those in favor of uh, moving the bill to Veterans of passing the bill and moving it to Veterans Affairs, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. The bill is uh, on its way to Veterans Affairs. Thank you, um, uh, Major Olson and Representative Lesh.